Hi, welcome to my YouTube. On May 1st, Canada banned several models of what they called assault rifles. These Type 97 bullpups were not included. So the question is, will they be? And my answer is, most likely, because the Prime Minister made it very clear he wants to ban all military-style semis. Because, and I quote, these weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to kill a large number of people in the shortest amount of time. That statement contradicts the job of the RCMP lab. They ensure guns with that capability are not allowed in the country. My gun that was banned was newly manufactured and could not do that. It, is, it has no full auto and the magazine limited five rounds. Its purpose are for target practice and for hunting. Some trappers use them for protection. Now, before I start comparing these two, I want to talk briefly about the history, and in particular, the Canadian history. During the Vietnam War, the Chinese noticed that the American was using a new ammo, 5.56 by 45, while they were using 7.62 by 39, Russian. By the end of the war, the Russian developed their own 5.45 by 39. These ammo were small calibers, lighter bullet, higher velocity, and flatter trajectory. So they figured they better come up with one, but they didn't want to copy anybody, especially the Soviet, because at that time, there was a lot of tension between the two countries. By 1987, they developed a 5.8 by 42 millimeter, but they had no gun, so they tested it on a newly developed gun called the Type 81. The results was good, so they proceeded, and by 1995, they designed a gun around this ammo. It's called the QBZ-95. It's a family of gun, from carbine with a 12 and a half inch barrel, uh, to a rifle with an 18 inch barrel, and to an LMG with a heavier barrel. In Canada, from late 2006 to late 2007, a company called Lever Arms imported a small batch, no more than 60. They were sold for over a thousand dollars. In the summer of 2008, Canada Ammo announced a pre-sale at $849. I jumped in. The shipment arrived in early 2009, but Custom held it and sent a sample to the RCMP lab to take a look. And they deemed the shipment as prohibited because it was too easy to convert to full auto. But it also deemed the existing rifles that was already in the Canadian homes as prohibited. And because of the small number, they were able to do a buyback program. By 2013, Norinco, the exporter, and EMEI, the manufacturer, resolved the issue of the fire control group. A big Canadian importer, North Silver, imported a large number and retailed them for $1,000. Now, why do people call this a Norinco Type 97? I have no idea, because Norinco is just the exporter. You don't call it North Silver because North Silver is an importer. The more appropriate name is EMEI, because they are the manufacturer, and that's the name on the rifle. In any case, it was a instant success because in Canada, there isn't too many bullpups. There's the Tavor, but it's at twice the price. But pretty soon, the love affairs start to sour. Some reports of feeding issues, while others just dislike the ergonomics. They didn't like the selector being like way over here. They didn't like the mag catch. On the other side, just a tiny little button. There was no rails except for an optional rail that goes on top of the carrying handle. But the biggest beef is the height of the optics when mounted. But us Canadians are a resourceful bunch. We have one of the toughest gun laws in the world. And unlike our neighbors to the south, we are not allowed AK-47, FN fouls, AUGs, MP5s, etc., etc. And now they took away our AR and VZ-58. Um, and that's why we Canadians love to tinker, hack and mod, and a lot of my viewers around the world don't understand that. They ask, 
why are you modifying the GSG-16 back to the GSG-5? Because the RCMP lab deemed the GSG-5 as prohibited. A 22, because it looked similar to an MP5. But nothing is interchangeable except for the furniture. I can't even put a bullpup stock on my SKS because bullpup stock are banned in Canada. A company in Vancouver called T97.ca saw an opportunity to resolve the issues. First, they redesigned the upper. It's called FTU, means flat top upper. It's made of aluminum and an individual can modify and install it. Later, they offered a aluminum lower with a new selector location and capable of using AR grips. How cool is that? They were so well received that uh, North Silver marketed them. In 2017, North Silver imported the Gen 2, which dealt with most of the deficiency. So, let's begin with the comparison. Okay, before I start comparing between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Gen 1 to the QBZ95. Obviously, I don't have a QBZ95, so I have to go according to pictures, but there's like three things I noticed that are different between the two of them. And number one is that uh, the Gen 1 does not have a bayonet lug. And number two, it does not have this extra thick uh, trigger guard uh, that doubles as a grip, a uh, front grip, I guess. And number three, obviously, uh, there's no uh, AR magwell um, on the QP-95. And those are the, th the three that I noticed that, that are different between the two of them. Okay, now moving along to the uh, Gen 1 to Gen 2. Uh, let's start from the muzzle, work our way down the lower, and then to the butt, and then come back in the upper. Okay, uh, the first thing uh, I notice is that it has a slightly different uh, uh, flash hider. It's, um, it's a birdcage uh, type 1. Uh, it might be even a little bit thicker, and it's definitely longer, so the ports are quite, uh, quite bigger. And I assume the reason why this is this diameter is not by chance is because it also doubles as a rifle grenade, like that. Now, I wonder why they need to do that when this gun also has a grenade launcher under the barrel already designed for it. So, don't know why. Okay, uh, so the both have the same flash hider, both don't have the uh, bayonet lug, the both lower looks identical, and uh, going back to the buttstock lower, now this is where I see the major changes are. Okay, first off is the mag catch. Um, the Gen 2 mag catch is ambidextrous. You can press this button if you want, or you can just pe press this one right on this side. Both will work. As you know, I already mentioned earlier that the mag catch on the Gen 1 is just this one little button and rather awkward to reach. And of course, the second uh, major change is um, the uh, selector, the size of the selector. Okay, the Gen 1 I have no idea. First of all, it's awkward to reach in the first place. And if you're wearing gloves, you know, there's no way you're going to be able to turn that because that is so low. And they improve that with a higher selector. A lot easier to turn. The buttstock looks the same. Sling looks the same. Uh, this uh, buttstock upper is slightly different because it has the plastic comes up here for the uh, carrying handle and the major major change is the upper okay as you can see they have done away with the high high sights okay the that's gone and this carrying handle is all gone and this is made out of aluminum and now they have these key mods and uh, m-lock on the sides so it's just great and it has this rail and this rail is about one foot perfect rail that goes all the way across and you have these uh, these sights which are very much much functional than this one now 
these sides flip up the front and the rear side okay this is windage this is vertical okay you turn and um, I honestly don't like the Gen 1 sights not the front uh, I don't mind the round hood with the post but the back sight is just awful okay what am I looking at I'm looking at 100 meters to 300 meters uh, that's 500 meters and then you got the strange little sight that looks like a post now, I'm supposed to assume that that when you're using this you're supposed to block the front post and that's probably for close quarters I assume I'm not exactly sure but I think that's what it is and the the worst part of this gun I the, actually the worst part of this uh, rear sight I don't like is the aperture size of of uh, 100 meters it is quite tiny it's about oh I would say maybe a snitch bigger than one millimeter so tiny that I can't even use it with my, with my poor eyesight comparing that to the gen 2 aperture size which is about three millimeter perfect it's great I like it the only negative I would say about the sights regarding the gen 2 is that the front post is kind of wobbly did you see that it's very wobbly front and back it's uh, that's uh, that's the only thing I have to complain about but um, the caulking handles I like the caulking handle better I like it uh, to the side like this okay um, I mean although both of them are ambidextrous uh, I'm not kind of used to putting my finger like this you know it's, uh, like one finger two finger I can't even decide which way to go um, so so that is the two difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 now between this time these two period between these two the QBZ95 went through another change and what they did I don't know if they were inspired by the um, T you know T97.ca um, moving the selector from from here to here the funny thing is that on the Gen 2 they did not move it even though between this time the QBZ95 did move the selector from there to there okay and uh, they did not incorporate that into the Gen 2 but they did on the QBZ95 so um, next thing I'm gonna do is disassemble this oh no one more thing one more thing about the magazine I need to talk about the magazine there is a big difference uh, between the magazine and that's partly because some people were complaining that they're having issue with the feeding um, and so as you can see uh, the first thing I noticed when I held the two of them is that the Gen 1 is made out of aluminum the Gen 2 is made out of steel okay the both follow follower looks identical so what is the change the big, big change I see is that the, the grooves for the Gen 2 um, two out of three grooves does not reach the base plate okay while the gen 1 all the grooves reaches the base plate okay and uh, also on the upper side of the magazine the gen 1 from the outer part of the casing curves inwards to the lip and and the gen 2 it actually drops off before it curves into the lip and there is a difference in the two openings if I were to do let's see which is the gen 1 just gen 1 and I, I measure the gap and I'm looking at about 12 and a half millimeter gap in the gen 1 and I'm gonna look do the measurement the gap of the gen 2 I'm looking at 11 millimeter so there is a one and a half millimeter difference between these lips in the gap so obviously uh, there's also other improvements internally you know before the chamber that I need to show you about 
but um, that is the big difference in the magazine. Okay, next step, I'm going to disassemble these guns, and then I'll talk about the difference uh, of the, of the, between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. Okay, I'm back. Now, both rifles are disassembled, and um, unfortunately, I can't fit them all on this small table. And what I'm going to do is start removing parts off this table. I'm going to start off with uh, parts that are interchangeable. And the first thing I see that are interchangeable is the lower. It's made out of plastic, not too flimsy, and it's uh, quite well made. And uh, in the grip, there is a cleaning kit. You press this button and slide the bottom plate back. And then the plate is there, cleaning's there, and both cleaning kit are the same. Okay, they are both identical. They're interchangeable. Okay, the next part. Uh, that are uh, interchangeable are the strikers. They are they're the same. There's uh, essentially no difference. Okay, so I'll take that off. Okay, next is the. Um, the piston and the spring. Yeah, and they're both identical. So I'll just take them off and just put them on the floor. Um, so is the lower pin. They are. Let's take that off. Okay. And uh, let's see, the bolt, the bolt, now uh, I've, uh, the bolt is the same, rotating bolt, identical, and I've interchanged them, they do work, take that off, okay, <clears throat> so that leaves um, parts uh, that are not quite interchangeable. The next closest that that is interchangeable with some modification is the stock, the uh, upper part of the stock. Okay, they're made out of uh, essentially this is plastic, some metal on this side where the buffer is. They are the same, except the only difference is this upper, uh, this front piece. Okay, otherwise. Um, again, it's made out of plastic, not too flimsy, and um, I'm going to remove those. Go on the floor. Okay, now I've got some room here that I could start moving some of these up. Okay, now i got all of them uh, on one table now, and um, the next closes uh, are the the bolt carrier uh, the bolt carrier is actually the same I can't vouch for the spring uh, I can see there's a slight uh, difference in uh, in uh, the distance it sticks out and also I can see that uh, obviously the front um, the G1 is designed with a caulking handle and the the G2 has the, uh, a separated caulking handle. But essentially, that these are the only difference. These are the same, and as you can tell, the spring is different, different length. <clears throat> okay, the next obvious uh, difference is the upper. Okay, this is G1. It has the caulking handle, plastic, again, quite well made, not too flimsy, and uh, I'll remove that. 
Now this is the G2 upper and it is um, made out of aluminum. Um, let's see, it is um, quite well made. It has um, M-lock and key mod on the sides. Good feature. It uh, has a one foot rail on top. It has folding uh, sights. Um, and this is the inside. This is where you could change the caulking handle from uh, left side to the right side. Simply by unscrewing that little uh, screw in there. It's a hex screw. Okay. And that, that's all it is. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this because this is attached to this simply by two hex screw on here. Most of you will find that it doesn't hold zero. Every time you clean this thing, you're going to find it's not going to hold zero. And the reason why it's not going to hold zero is because they, they, they made a minor error. And the minor error is in these screws. They are round screw heads. Okay. There are metrix number five screws like this and at the bottom of the head it's actually flat if you see this this part is flat now I tell you why they made that mistake is because when I have this on top like this okay and when I have these screws these screws hold the upper to the rifle and because you can't lock tight this okay as you start shooting them it vibrates and the screw will become a little loose okay and when they come a little loose, guess what happens to the upper rail? It starts to move side to side. Here it is. Okay, you can actually feel it moving a little side to side. Okay, let's, uh, like that. Okay. Can you hear it moving side to side? Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Okay, but it does. So every time you clean, because this rail, this upper, is not fitted perfectly to the uh, barrel mounts. Okay, and that is the problem. But there's an easy, quick fix. What you need to do is remove these screws. Okay, these are number five metric screws. And change them instead of a round head these are round head screws instead of round head screws replace them with replace them with oval head screws or even flat head screw would work you need the bottom okay this is what you have right now it's the they call it the pan okay pan pan over the round head and you see the bottom of the round head actually it's, it's it is what shape is this actually this is uh it could be a pan oh no it's not a pan it's more like a round head but the bottom of the round head where it meets the thread is straight okay you need to get rid of that straight and make it an angle so as you can see the oval the, the bottom of the uh, screw head is in an angle so the flat head the flat head is also in an angle that's what you need to use you, you need to use either a flat or an oval okay uh, here I'm gonna clarify a bit if you look at this screw see this uh, bottom part here well, let's see if I can get uh... okay you see the screw see this part here it's flat you need to have this in an angle 
if this is an angle, every time you screw this in, it will automatically center this uh, upper. It will automatically do that, okay? And you also need to bevel this edge inside a little bit, okay? So you would have more contact with the bottom of the head. Okay, remember the bottom of the head is in an angle, but this is, is designed for a straight, flat, you know, bottom of the head. So you need to bevel this a bit. Once you bevel this, and then you put in an oval or a flat uh, oval or a flat head that has a angle bottom. This every time you screw this in, this mount will center. Okay, that's what you need. So, okay, uh, got that one uh, sorted out. <clears throat> Let's take that out. Now let's talk about uh, the gas system. These uh, gas plugs, they look identical, but they're not quite. And uh, to remove them, you're supposed to use a bottom of the um, ammo casing, or whatever you have, and turn them in, and this is how you unlock. Or you have, or you can just press this middle piece and it'll help you unlock. You see that? Okay, and then and turn it uh, 90 degrees and, and uh, both of these uh, gas plug will come out. Now, they appear to be identical, but they're not quite uh, because, because of these two portholes over here. Not the larger one, the larger one, uh, the size of the hole is identical, but the uh, smaller one, the um, the G1 hole looks like a two millimeter, and a G2 looks uh, about a three millimeter hole. That that is the only difference between this two. Now, uh, what does that mean? I think um, um, I don't know. I haven't investigated close enough to find out why they increase the size of the hole. Okay. Now, I also noticed that uh, for the G2, they added a extra half round plate onto the gas system, and it goes like this. Okay, it goes in lower. Uh, I'm not going to snap it in because it's a pain in the ass to uh, remove. So I'll do it when I uh, when I uh, reassemble. Now. Um, the G1 does not have it. G2, they added this on. Okay, now it brings us to the barrel and the receiver. Okay. The obvious uh, difference, obviously, is the this upper part where um, the G2 does not have the sights. That's uh, pretty obvious. Um, other than that, um, they both look identical from here, from the trunnion forward. Okay, they look the same if it wasn't for the sights. Uh, to me, it looks like um, they modified this part by connecting, uh, by connecting this together. And uh, they just basically cut off uh, the uh, front uh, sight and uh, of course they remove all this and then they tap two number five holes uh, for the uh, the G2 upper. Now moving along into the actual receiver um, they uh, appear identical and essentially they are um, I looked at it very carefully and I could not find actual any difference and of course if you remember uh, one of the two major changes that they did is to the not to the receiver itself but to the um, selector 
and to the mag catch but I did notice that did make a uh, one change to the receiver and what they did is that they added two half round ramps right there you see that there it is they added those two ramps to guide the ammo uh, remember uh, some people were complaining of uh, feeding issues and obviously they heard the, the the complaints and have added it now that's the G2 as you see the G1 uh, is just flat straight across okay now obviously uh, it, it does look like a minor modification to, uh, minor modification to some um, I mean you just simply add two grooves but if you if you did a wrong um, wrong job and because you don't have the two two samples in front of you you could have you could do this wrong so be careful when you um, buy a G1 and you find somebody has put in the two grooves that uh, they did it properly okay uh, if it's done improperly then obviously it's going to continue to have uh, feeding issues um, so that's the only thing I, I see with the receiver that has been changed is um, that they added um, um, two half round ramps to guide the uh, ammo into the chamber um, now I did try out the trigger and um, here's the trigger link they look the, the same no real change and I tried to look into the uh, mechanism of the uh, uh, fire control group they look the same to me too but when I actually cocked it and fired it um, somehow the G2 felt better now the G1 had that long travel and then when it uh, kind of engaged the sear it still had a, a, another minor travel before it actually uh, uh, disengaged and this one they did have that travel but as soon as it touched you know uh, engaged it uh, fired so the G2 I don't know how and I can't seem to find out the difference but the G2 uh, trigger to me is a lot better okay so um, um, that kind of concludes the, the comparison okay uh, so uh, thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe